Hi. Hi, folks. I'm Bob Schrupp, physical therapist. Brad Hannick, physical therapist. And together we are the most famous physical therapists on the internet. In our opinion, of course. Today, Bob. Brad, we're going to talk about the 10 best knee pain exercises ever created. Stretches that's and strength. That's a big mouthful, Bob. Yeah, that's a big uh, you know, promise. But uh, Brad and I have been doing this for combined uh, probably 50 some years now. And, you know, over all those years, we've kind of called and picked out which ones we thought were the best exercises. If, sure. you know, and, and this is taking into account, Brad, that your knee pain can be caused by a lot of different things. Right. So we're going to show you some exercises, give them a try, and you can see which ones work for you. Right. And only use them if they clearly give improvement. If they create pain, you stop and put that one off to the side. So hi to the folks on Facebook that are we're, we're going live right now. Sure uh, if you're watching the rebroadcast on YouTube, please take, take a second to subscribe to us. We provide videos on stay healthy, fit, and pain-free, and we upload every day. And if you're on YouTube, go over to Facebook, too, because yeah. we do these live events. We do lots of fun things, and we like to be liked. Yeah, back and forth. And tell, can they say if they like me better than you, Bob? Uh, oh. I don't think they can. Sorry. <laughs> anyway, first exercise, Brad. This is a technique. Um, if you are having something going on in the joint, um, sometimes even a little bit of... Uh, if you have a meniscus tear, mm -hmm. even a, a cartilage tear, sometimes this helps out. Okay. Or if there's arthritis and there's you know, things flecking off and flaking off, this, uh, this actually can help somewhat. So We're talking what, inside the joint, not your yeah, skin. Right. <laughs> so what you're going to do, what you may not realize is when the knee bends, it also turns. So there's a, the, when the knee is bending, this bottom bone here is actually turning. Yeah, it rotates slightly. It's not, it's not significant, but it's subtle, but it's important. So especially if you, if, you, if you don't have as much knee bend as you should have and it feels like it's getting blocked somewhat mm -hmm. after arthritis or after some injury, what you can try, and this should be pain-free, by the way. Sure. I don't want pain with this. So I'm going to actually, yeah, he's going to grab on there. I'm grabbing the lower part of the tibia here, uh, I mean the upper part of the tibia, and I'm turning it. I'm turning it this way. I'm turning it towards the other leg. So you kind of get a hold in the front. That's the bony part. You can do yep. that. And I'm then turning it. His thumbs are in the back yep. behind you. And then as it. I turn, I'm bending the knee. Right. And I'm going back and forth. And I'm doing this turn the whole time. I'm holding the turn the whole time. Now, again, this should not increase pain. This should not cause more pain. It should sometimes actually feel better. Right. Then you know that you're doing the right thing. And you can bend it further then you're right on the money. Less yep. pain, more range of motion. And there you, you can go. do two sets of 10 of those. Sure. So another common problem that people have, Brad, is that they are having pain underneath the kneecap itself. Sure. Uh, underneath the patella. So one thing you want to do is you want to stretch that kneecap okay. so that it has more motion and it's not grinding down onto the bone as much. Right. So basically we're doing a patella mobilization, we call it. That's right. So you're going to have to take a look at my ugly leg here, but... Oh, it's um, not that ugly, Bob. Yeah, I oh, guess it is. It is. It is, it is that ugly, yeah. So Brad's going to show on, we're going to get a little close up on Facebook, and, and Lonnie's going to kind of go in on the, on the camera there. So the first thing you want to do is you're going to, you know, you're going to make sure the leg is very relaxed. You know, the, the quadricep, if, you, if it's not relaxed, you can't move that kneecap at all. So you're going to let it uh, support it on something. And now, as you can see, I'm using my two thumbs, and I'm pushing down like this. I'm pushing the kneecap down. And for some people, this is kind of a icky feeling, Brad. Right. Don't you say it, they don't like this? Yeah, you have to be relaxed and yeah. just let it go. And now I'm going to take my other two fingers and I'm pushing it up. So I'm pushing it towards me. I'm giving it a stretch. Yeah, I think your hands are in the way to see from the All side. Right. There you go. So I'm stretching it this way. That's not lipstick on his knee there. That, that's, I put that on. Yeah, it's he so, put arrows there. Yeah, so we know the direction we're moving it. And the final one is I'm going to go this way. I don't know if Lonnie can see this or not, but I'm going to push the kneecap this way because quite often it's tight and it wants to go out to the outside, and right. that's why it's giving you troubles. So I'm going to push the kneecap over this way. You got any of that, Lonnie? She actually is smiling, so I don't know what that means. <laughs> so, Bob, the, you ought to see this from our view. <laughs> uh, these, these are stretches you can do a lot. Right. I mean, they, these are especially if you're getting pain underneath right. the kneecap. If you feel like grinding when yep. you do that, it's a good one to do. Now, they call that a lateral release if they do the surgery. So we're trying doing this could actually save you that, right, that, that surgery. surgery right? Yeah. So if you have patellofemoral syndrome, that is what the, uh, one of the things you're going to want to do is uh, that stretch. All right, the next one, Brad, is this, this is a good one for people who have maybe some arthritis in their knee, and their knee doesn't straighten out quite all the way. Sure. It, it, you know, 
Um, and what they have found, Brad, Brad and Lonnie, is that what if about you, the people out there and and subscribers? <laughs> um, if if uh, if you actually increase the, the the knee extension a little bit, even it helps decrease the pain. Sure. So it, even if it's a modest amount, so you can tell whether or not your knee is not straight as the other one is. If you just put both legs up, and if one's down straight like this and the other one's up a little bit, you know that one needs work because that one's not not straightening as much as it should. Exactly. So what you can do is you're actually going to put it up on a, a stool like this, and you're going to actually take both arms, and you can just go pressure on, pressure off, pressure on, pressure off. Now, they might be asking, how much pressure, Bob? Bob, tell us how much. Well, I don't want pain, but, I, you know, you can bump into the pain a right. little bit. So, so after repetitions, after four or five, the pain should be reducing and maybe a little more range. Then you know you're doing the right, right. thing. And I would do the first day, I would only do 10 of these and see how it is the next day sure. or how you did that night. I had one guy that got a little too uh, exuberant on this, oh, and he, he did like 30, 40, and he was not even going to come back to therapy. Yeah, uh, he, but he overdid it. He overdid it. it was, he couldn't sleep that night, which means that he did something. You know, he actually... He got things moving, but he irritated. But things. in the end, it did work for him, by sure. the way. It, okay. just, it, it did work really quite well. All right, next one, Brad. Um, the same is true if the knee is not bending as well as it should. Sure, yep. um, we did that one, but you can also just do a straight, straight old lay down and do some of these pressure on, pressure off. Yep. Pressure on, pressure off. And where you put your hands on this can make a difference. Sometimes it's a little better if you go up closer to the knee and or sometimes down here, but get a little more it, leverage. Do which way feels better and it makes the knee move better with less pain. You can do that one in a chair too or on a, a higher bench like this. You can put it up there if you can get your leg up there and you can do a pressure on this way too and pressure off. Sure. Pressure on, pressure off. That, that's a nice one you can do into a stairwell. Sure. If you got, especially if there's armrests or armrests, uh, handles on both sides, you know, what do you call those? The banisters? <laughs> Railings? I, lost, I don't know. Yeah, the railings. I lost it there, Bob. Oh, do you want to show a quad stretch, for Brad? Sure. Yep. Uh, I, you know, if you've got good balance, you know, use something to hold on to if you've got a balance problem. As long as you're capable of stretching like this, those quadriceps will stretch really nice. Not if your like quads this. are really tight, they're going to pull on that kneecap, sure. and it's going to grind it up some more. So <laughs> it, it's it's important that this is a, a you know you can stretch this muscle out. Right. It if the knee's a, up like here, it, it won't be stretching. You want to bring it down here, but but not like this either. Good tall posture, knee down, everything in line, and then you're going to feel those quads stretch right there. Yep, and you can actually do this laying down too. You can do it laying flat on your stomach, but you can also do it this way, Brad. Sure. You can you can bring your leg back like this, and you can lay on your side, and this is an easy way to do it. This yep. is a, a, a simple way to do it, and here I can pull it back and give it a good stretch. Right, right. So next one, Brad, if you're having a lot of pain on the outside of your knee, sure. and it might be coming from your IT band. Right, which sure. is a, a wide band and down from here, and it goes up to the, the muscle. What's that muscle again called? Um, TFL? Uh, TFL, that's right, tensor fasciolata. Ah, yes. There we go. Good job, Brad. I blanked out on it for a minute. <laughs> um, and a good way to stretch that, Brad, is just to actually lay down. And you can do, you can do this with a stretch-out strap, Brad, but you can also just bring the leg up, and you're going to bring it over to the side right. here. And I'm now that's stretching here. And you can hit different angles of the TFL by, by of the IT band, you know, attaching the TFL by, by how you move it. Right. So in other words, you're saying if you bring the leg up this way further or down this way. And normally, I guess we're going to have to remove the cupboards yeah. because your foot's hitting there. You're going to have to get cupboards removed at home. That's okay. <laughs> we don't mind. Just tell your wife. All right, next one, Brad, uh, hamstring and heel cord stretches. You want to show a hamstring stretch? You better believe it. My, my favorite one is I just simply like to go up to something about this height. A stairwell is nice with a hand rail. I remember it now. And keep the back straight and just lean into it. I'm getting a good stretch right now. Don't get all caught up in a round in your back and trying to touch your nose to your toes, your knee, or whatever. That's, that's not what you want. Good posture, stretch it out. Are you going to show that, Bob? Yeah, I thought I would. Yeah, that is a nice tool for yeah, this. Yeah, I think some of the, do you know that I think some dog collars and leashes are like this? I think they, they have a thing and then they have a lot of handles on them. I think I've seen that. Really? Yeah, but anyway, this is a stretch out strap. It's from OPTP. And uh, this works out really well for doing hamstring stretches because you sure. can just put it on here and you can grab through the handles here 
and it, it's just just real easy to pull up and get and do a stretch. Easy on your back. Sure. And, and yep. you can do um, keep the knee straight, straight. as you can to emphasize hamstring uh, stretching. And there. you can do contract, relax, where right. you actually pull, push down. Ready? Pull, push down, and and as you relax, you pull it up further. Sure. So yep. you push down, then relax, push down, relax. So this is the contract, and this is the relax. Yeah, and that will give you more range of motion and more flexibility. How about a heel cord stretch, Brad? The heel, a lot of people don't realize the calf muscle actually crosses over the knee, too, so you want to make sure that you're, you're doing that, too. So. All right, so he's saying right here, this, the gastroc goes up over the knee joint, crosses the knee joint, and we want to keep that muscle loose as well. Um, th this is my favorite way, although a lot of people don't have an incline board. Um, Are like we catching that. that on Facebook? Oh, yeah. Can, can they see it down there? No. No? Okay, now we do. Oh, thanks, Bob. Now we got some. And I'm going to keep my knee straight till I get that gastroc muscle that does cross the knee, and I can bend the knee. If I don't have one of these, you know, you can simply go against the wall or a chair and stretch it like this. There's a little more work. It doesn't work quite as well. Oh, Bob, you walked right in front of the camera. I know, but yeah. I had to do this. Okay, okay. So we're stretching there, and make sure you do both legs. Otherwise, you start walking in circles. Bob, wanna, I'm just going to say hi to Alexandria Hutchinson. Oh, really? And well, hello. Uh, also, Leanna Crow. All right. So, well, thanks for watching. I hope yeah. you're enjoying this and maybe learning something new. And and uh, yeah, we got to. This is a good. This is working out pretty well, Bob. All right, we got to keep moving. Next, oh, next wow. one. Uh, we're going to do just a straight leg raise, Brad. This yep. is now we're getting into strengthening. Sure. So we're going to lay down. This is just a good universal strengthening of the knee without really bending the knee and putting mm -hmm. stress on the Bring knee. Up. This knee is bent. I'm strengthening this one. All right. And you can just go up and hold it for a count of 10. And, you know, after a while, you'll start to feel these. It looks easy, but you'll be amazed. So you want to keep the knee fully extended here. And the toe pointing up. Yeah. Don't go out this way or this exactly. way. Exactly. And you can do some power ones too, Brad. Finish up with some power ones where you just it's go up of, and down. It's kind of like a plyometric that way, yeah. which is you know fancy exercise. Yeah. And it's important to have this knee up and this foot. It really helps the, the low back and the. And when the we get some of the young girls who have patellofemoral syndrome, uh, I tell them they can do thousands of these if they want to. I mean right. that's that's how often you can do them. I mean you can do lots and lots of strengthening on these. Sure. So, Brad, do you want to do a hamstring on the ball? Sure, hamstring. Strengthening? Strengthening, oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Here, let's just... Oh. Oh. Okay. There's oh. Brad's money's there's, falling there's a out. There's tip for you, Bob. Yeah. All right. I'm going to stop that from happening so you don't get any more. Okay. So, hands here. Lift the buttocks up in the air and simply roll the ball towards you. And that is a great deal of hamstring work being done right now. If you're can do 10, 20 of them like this without much problem to make it harder. You can emphasize the right leg by putting the left one across on the top. And then make sure, again, you do both sides so you walk in a straight line, the right leg on top of the left. And if you're really one of those... I'm saying hi to Alexandra Hutchinson and also Fred C. Dobbs, who thinks we look like two old women. Fred does? <laughs> yeah. Wow, Fred, how could you say it's such a Fred. thing? Fred. Anyways, let's do a hamstring right here. Oh, that is really LH aggressive. LH is high. Oh, good. Uh, oh. Uh, so that's a great way to work and focus on those hamstrings. And I would do three sets of 10, three sets of 20 of those, um, depending on how aggressive you are. And really. I love doing those. Those are one of my favorite ones. And the last one we're going to do, Brad, is the ball on the wall. The ball on the wall. Yeah. <laughs> You can do shallow squats with those, or you can, and I'll go ahead and handle this, Brad, so you're, yeah. Brad's going to go on the wall. The ball on the wall, back on the ball, feet shoulder width, out in front of you, good posture, not rounding forward, shoulders back, head up, chin in, all that type of thing. We're going to go down until our thighs are parallel with the floor. If you're not able to go that far, do not, just kind of make a short one and build up to the deep one. Do not go down this deep. Yeah, Next. now Alexandra Hutchinson was asking if she's had pain in her meniscus after having surgery years yeah. ago, she could do these. She can do shallow ones of these. Okay, you know, and pain free. Um, and straight leg raises too. The okay, ones that are, perfect, yep. yeah. That's exactly what we're looking for after the surgery. Um, 
So yeah, and these, if you want to make them more difficult for, for those people that are really strong, you can cross over like this, same as when we did the ball on the hamstrings laying down. And again, you're going to watch, do both sides so that we keep walking straight line. You can see I cannot go down with one leg near. That's working hard, yeah. aren't you? Right. That, you can get really aggressive with this particular exercise. All right, last this comment. Chris Middleton Vaughn says she thinks we were great, Brad. Oh, thanks, Chris. That's a wonderful <laughs> comment. We got one person out there that likes yeah. us anyways. I hope she liked us on the Facebook thing. Uh, All right, Brad. Well, I think we can, we can wrap stopping. it up here. So, oh, yeah. um, thanks everybody for watching. And remember, Brad and I can fix just about anything except for that broken heart. But we're working on exactly it. Exactly right. We got some duct tape here. We've got, we've got a lot of tools that we're going to keep working with. Remember, Thomas Edison, he took 10,000 times to make that light bulb. All right. Thanks, Brad.